Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you the most frequently used layout options available in Qt widgets applications. Using these layout options, you can design more complicated UIs with better window support. What I mean is that when we resize the application, all the widgets will resize accordingly and also the application will be much easier to use for the user. So I will first show you what I'm talking about so you can get a basic understanding of what we are going to do in this video. So I will run three applications. The first one is without any layout. So this is just our plain simple to do application. So we have these widgets laid out like this. And if I resize the application, the application is not working the way we want it to. So when we resize the applications, some widgets should resize and these buttons should align perfectly to the corners. But none of that is working right now because we haven't used any layout options. All we did was just lay out these in fixed positions. So let's go to the next example. And in here, we have some sort of layout going on. So now if I resize the application, you will see the text box and the list widget is being resized when we resize the window. And these buttons are staying in the corners without resizing because buttons are not meant to be resized in a proper application. But there are some exceptions. I will show it in the next example. But for now, as you can see, there is minimum size for the window. I cannot reduce the size of the window anymore. But I can maximize the window and everything will just stay the way they should be. Now, in the next example, we have a, some sort of calculator layout. So if I run this application, you will see that the buttons have been scaled up to fill the entire grid. And we have the text box resizing horizontally and not vertically, but the buttons are resizing both horizontally and vertically. And the text label stays at a fixed position. So there are a few layout options going on in these two applications and I will show you every one of them. So let's go to the to-do app. So first we have the absolute layout. This is called an absolute layout because all we have done is just laid out the items in fixed positions, in absolute positions. So this is not a really good practice to follow because as you saw, the UI is not responsive and it is not good for the user experience. So we will go to a one with layouts. So we have some layouts going on in here. First, I will show you each one of them and then I will explain how to do it yourself. First, we have what is called a horizontal layout. This will lay out the items horizontally. And then we have another horizontal layout right here. And this will also do the same thing. And also, all of these items are laid out in a vertical layout. And the central widget has a vertical layout option so all these horizontal layouts will be laid out vertically like this. Now, if I break these layouts one by one, you can understand how everything is working. So I will remove these layouts and let's start from scratch. So this is the starting point of the application. So this is basically an absolute layout. So if I want to lay out two or more things horizontally, I will select those things and I will just click on this option right here, which says layout horizontally or control H. And if I click that, it will create this box around it. And every item we put in here will be laid out horizontally, just like that. And you can keep adding items to this layout. Next, I will do the same for these two buttons as well. Select the two buttons and I will click horizontal layout. And now I want all of these items to be in a vertical layout on the central widget. So I will click on the window this time, just click on the main window, this empty space right here, and then click the type of layout you want. Then all the child elements will be laid out according to that layout. So if I click vertical layout or layout vertically, all of those layout will, layouts will be laid out vertically. Now, if I didn't have horizontal layouts for these two items, see, um, see what happens if I just click on the vertical layout option on the main window. So as you can see, everything is just laid out vertically, no columns. So if you want this type of application, it's fine. But in our case, we will use horizontal layouts for these and a vertical layout for the main window. So like that. 
Now, there is a problem with these two buttons. I don't like these buttons to be stretched. So what I can do is I can add some space to this left side so that these two buttons will stay on the right side and not resize or stretch according to the window. Now, if I resize the window, these buttons will be resized as well. And if I maximize the window, the whole bottom area will be filled with these two buttons and it is not a very good practice in UI design. So what we can do is we can go to the toolbox and just search for spacer. And in this case, we need a horizontal spacer and not a vertical spacer. So I will choose the horizontal spacer, drag and drop it before this button. So if you can see, there is a blue line occurring here and I can just drop it there and it will just work the way I want it to work. So it will just take all the space available for it and leave space enough for these two buttons. And now, if I run this application, everything should work fine. And I can resize the application like this. And as you can see, I cannot reduce the size of this form because the layout has some additional features that do not let the user destroy the whole UI. So in this case, it will set some minimum size for the main window so that the user cannot reduce the size of that window anymore. So, and also if we maximize the application, it works as well. So the list widget can take all the vertical space while something like a text box can take all the horizontal space and everything is very intelligently planned and laid out thanks to the Qt framework. So now let's go to the calculator example. And in here I have what is called a grid layout because obviously I need a grid to do something like this. Otherwise it will be very tedious to lay out three items horizontally and then lay three of those horizontal layouts vertically. That's not the way we should work. We should make things easier. So I will just break the layouts like this. And uh, so also uh, to break the layout, you can click on this button, break layout button. Okay. That way you can break the layout and you can just place anything where you want, just like in the absolute layout. I will just remove all this to show you. So what I will do is just grab push button like this and then I will copy it by holding control and dragging it like this or you can just copy paste like that and I will just paste them like this so once I have nine buttons then I will select all of these buttons and click on the grid layout button so layout in a grid so this will create a grid and lay out all these items in the grid now I can place these items in the appropriate cells and the grid will adjust its size to suit the grid I am making. So as you can see, so now the grid is a three by three grid and the buttons have been placed perfectly. Now I will select all of these buttons and here in the properties panel, I will search for size. Okay. So in size, I will set the horizontal policy is already set to minimum. This means that the buttons will have a minimum size. So when someone reduces the size of the window, let's say, then the buttons will have a minimum size and the user cannot reduce the window size anymore. So let's say I try to um, actually first we need to lay, lay all these out vertically like this. Just, just select the main window, the empty, empty, empty space and then click layout vertically okay and then um, if I do this you will see that I cannot reduce the size anymore because these buttons have a minimum size so if I go to uh, so if I select all these buttons and go to size and set the horizontal policy to ignored then I can resize uh, like this so this text I think this text label has uh, minimum size or this text box has a minimum size I don't know so that's what's restraining us from resizing this anymore but as you can see the buttons have been resized and squished so that's not what we want so we will set to minimum so that way the buttons will take uh, the minimum so the buttons will take the minimum size and we cannot resize it anymore like that and also I will select all the buttons and select the vertical policy of size policy to be to be preferred okay so this way 
they will expand like this. So they will fill the entire grid just like in a calculator. So if I open the calculator, the Windows calculator, you will see that the buttons get expanded. So that's how a calculator works if you don't know. Uh, okay, so I can do that. So all we have to do is set the vertical policy to preferred and this will expand these buttons to fill the entire space. Now if I run this application, you will see that everything works perfectly. So if I maximize the application, everything works perfectly. And we have this. And also you can set a minimum size to these push buttons. So if I select all these and these are just additional options, you can explore these options on your own. So if I set the height to be something like 100 pixels or let's say 300 pixels, that's too much. So let's say, okay, let's say 100. Okay, now if I try to reduce it, you can see that uh, the buttons have some height. So if I select the buttons and reduce that further, let's say 50, okay. And okay, as you can see, now the buttons are a little bit bigger than before. So as you can see, the buttons are a little bit bigger and I mean in the sense of height. So now they have a little bit more height. So if I select all of these buttons and set the text to one because so it takes the width of only one character, then we can re reduce the size of it even more. And if I select the buttons and if I remove the height, the minimum height to be zero, and then if I run the application, you will see that we can reduce the size of the buttons even further like that okay so those are the things i wanted to talk about in this video because these are really important concepts to be used at an early age when learning to create gui applications using the Qt framework because you need responsive uis that respond to the window being resized and maximized so the user experience for the user is going to be very good you will struggle a lot to create layouts if you didn't know about these layout options available in Qt. So you can explore a little bit more on your own and try to create more complicated layouts. I think this is enough for this video. Take this video as a starting point. That's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now and don't forget to subscribe.